Our third big topic this week is kind of about an interesting week that Microsoft is having. So first, they released their quarterly earnings. These revealed um, kind of mixed results that actually led to a drop in the company's stock price. Um, they actually beat their overall revenue and earnings per share expectations, but they fell a little short on cloud revenue, uh, which came in about $0.2 billion lower than expected. However, despite that, their overall revenue grew by 21% year over year. Um, interestingly, and this is kind of the important point here, they noted that AI services contributed eight percentage points of growth to Azure and other cloud services revenue, which overall saw a 29% increase. Now, as part of these earnings announcements, um, Jameen Ball, who is a partner at Altimeter released some really interesting stats on kind of where Microsoft is at today when we think about where the rubber is really meeting the road in terms of AI generating revenue and usage. So uh, he had tweeted out or posted on X rather that Azure AI services, which is what was responsible for that eight percentage point bump in the earnings, has a $5 billion runway, which is up 900% year over year. It has 60,000 customers, up 60% year over year. GitHub is at a $2 billion run rate. That's up from a billion just a couple of years ago. GitHub Copilot, which is the company's AI coding assistant, has 300 million in ARR. And also, uh, Jameen Ball said that he, the daily users of Office Copilot have doubled quarter over quarter and Office Copilot customers grew 60% year over year. Now, to kind of tie all this together, these developments come just as Microsoft researchers have also released their second report on AI and productivity, which is called Generative AI in Real World Workplaces. What this report does is it synthesizes a bunch of findings from a number of recent Microsoft studies on how these tools are having an impact in the real world, both generative AI as a whole and Microsoft Copilot specifically. So here's a few highlights. And Paul, I know you had quite a few thoughts on mm -hmm. some of the other stuff we're seeing in this report as well. But some of the highlights include one of the studies was a large scale randomized controlled trial across 60 plus organizations. It found that Copilot users read 11% fewer emails spent 4% less time on emails, and edited 10% more documents using the tool. In another survey, interestingly, Microsoft found that 78% of knowledge workers out of 31,000 surveyed said they used at least some AI tools not provided by their organization. And another survey on Copilot usage showed that the perceived benefits from Copilot increased with longer usage duration. So, Paul, to kind of like pull all these threads together, it seems like AI is actually contributing real business value to someone like Microsoft. The adoption appears to be increasing according to the studies. Like what jumped out at you about what they were finding in terms of how people were using either Copilot or generative AI? So I want to like laser in on the, the one where they studied 60 organizations and 6,000 individuals across industries. So you talked about what were pretty underwhelming results, like people with co-pilot within this control group read 11% fewer individual emails and spent 4% yeah. less time interacting with them. It's like, okay, like, I don't know, like, is email really the interesting use case here, like it, it was focusing obviously on on products uh, and capabilities that uh, 365 enables. So they looked at like meeting time and emails and stuff like that. Um, but like the one they talked about was summarizing emails. So they hypothesized that people were spending less time on emails because maybe they were using the summarize feature. I, I would mm. think they'd be able to monitor that. But um, I always like kind of laugh at the summarize feature. Again, maybe it's just me. But who uses that? Like, it's the first thing everybody's felt. Like, Zoom has a summarize this thread. It's like five, th th there's like a total of 50 words in the thread. I don't need you to summarize it for me. And like, how long are your email threads that you need the summarize email button? Like, just read the last email in the thread usually. So I don't know. Like, I feel like they were assessing this against features that I don't find that interesting. And maybe this goes back to the Chevron conversation where we were saying like they had 20,000 co-pilot licenses, they weren't sure of the ROI. Well, right. if, 
if the features, the AI capabilities you're using are summarizing emails and meetings and like, that's it. And you're not individualizing use cases to people and like providing training and education of how to use them, then, okay, yeah, I, I guess maybe Copilot is pretty useless. I don't know. Like, so I was a little bit sort of surprised at how they conducted the study. Like, if you're Microsoft and you want to show the value of Copilot, giving it to 6,000 people across 60 organizations and waiting to see if they sent fewer emails mm. or if they spent less time in meetings, if that's your measurement of whether or not they got value from Copilot, then I think you got a bigger problem on your hands as Microsoft. <laughs> so I see the problem, and I kind of highlighted this in our, our last conversation. 6,000 people got Copilot with, I, I, I read the doc and I scanned it to make sure I didn't miss something. I keyword searches for training, education, and onboarding. They don't appear in the document related mm -hmm. to any of this. So it doesn't seem like they taught anyone how to use Copilot for one. They didn't use any imagination in the use cases for it. They just literally sat back and waited to see if they sent fewer emails. So what right. about teaching people like a marketer, like how do you use Copilot to do marketing more efficiently? So it's just like these homogenous applications. Like we're just going to assess the use and value of Copilot based on emails, meetings, and documents. Okay, well, what about... I'm a marketer, I'm a salesperson, I'm a customer service rep. Give me five use cases, teach me how to use Copilot to do those five use cases, benchmark my performance before and after. Like, why do we have to do these like blind studies and just see how many people figure out how to use Copilot? So I don't know. Like I I was kind of excited to read this. And then I got into it and I was like, oh, like this <laughs> this is what they spent months doing. Like this seems like a totally backwards way to do this. So my takeaway here is as we've said before, like research reports can be really valuable. Don't rely on these to know whether or not Copilot is going to create value for you and your company or ChatGPT or Google Gemini or whatever it is. Do your own work, individualize, personalize the use cases, train people on the platform, create benchmarks, run 90 day studies to look at the improvement. Like this is not adoption done the right way for generative AI is basically what I'm saying. And I would expect Microsoft would have had the foresight to do this study differently um, because it's their product they're trying to show the value for. And yet they just, I don't know, it didn't do it. Like, I'm sorry, a 10% increase in or reduction in time spent on emails with some hypotheses as to why that would be occurring, such as maybe they're using the summarize function. Like, mm. I'm not buying 10,000 licenses for Copilot based on that data. <laughs> I don't yeah. know. What did you think? Like, I was, yeah. well, I, know, I was being harsh or what? It did make me feel a little crazy because I was like, okay, it's like mildly interesting. I'm glad we're starting to ask some questions around real world applications versus some of the research they previously kind of just done in a lab or in a really isolated right. use case. So I appreciated that. But I was like, we're sitting there day in, day out, talking to people, running workshops, doing speaking engagements where it's like, even like on a few ounces of creativity is like, look what you can do with document analysis. Look what you can do when you start using this for ideation or as a strategy assistant. And I'm not saying like Copilot can do every single possible thing we can envision using generative AI tools for, but even I just think of like the slides we show all the time in intro to AI or my applied AI talks or your, your strategic leader talks. Like these are way more creative yeah. than any of the things in these studies. And I'm like, I don't think they're even rocket science either. So I'm curious as to like where the disconnect came from. Like did Microsoft want to play it safe? Did they just not think of, I, I can't I believe know. they didn't think of these things. I, guess, I know. And I think my biggest through. problem was like when you read the introduction, it literally says, we believe this research is the largest controlled study of productivity impacts in real world generative AI deployments to date. Okay. If you're going to make that claim, this better be good. This better not be you think people are using the summarize feature in emails to save time. So again, yeah, you know, yeah. not to kill Microsoft for this, <laughs> sure, but sure. this <laughs> is, is not what it was supposed to be. Like this could have been way, way better if. They took people like the BC, I always go back to like that BCG one with the consultants. Mm -hmm. Even that one, they didn't train them how to use GPT-4. Right. They just gave it to them. Right. 
So I, I think the opportunity is if we rephase this, we believe that this research is the largest controlled study of productivity impacts in real world generative AI deployment state. Someone has the opportunity to do the largest one that actually customized use cases, train people how to use the platform and benchmark before and after. Now I'm reading like, so if and someone that, does that study or knows of that study, please let Mike and I know. Yeah, for sure. And I, you know, I, again, you're right. Like, I'm not trying to bag on their really great work here or like, I'm sure this took a lot of effort, but it feels like they might've, and I understand why focused on, we want to do the largest controlled study and didn't control for doing an interesting one, you know? Yes. So it's like, I'd rather have a study where it's like, Hey, we found 50 people and that have used AI to 10 X their output. And I'd be like, okay, I re awesome. I'll read that. I mean, just, I realize it's not <laughs> controlled across all the groups, but that's right. like way more interesting to me. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. I, I'm with you. No. <laughs> uh, maybe we need to run that study. I don't know. Yeah. Right. Then maybe that's next state of the industry. Uh, yeah. Report.